Hello, this is part two on amplitude modulation. So we're going to continue from slide number 25. Power contained in an AM wave. So as we, uh, as we noticed in the previous slide, we say that for our AM spectrum, we have three components. We have got the fre uh, carrier frequency, we've got the lower side frequency, and we've got the upper side frequency. And also now we want to take a look at these voltages. For the carrier component, we've got the amplitude being VC. For the lower side frequency, uh, the amplitude is VM over 2. And then for the upper side frequency, the amplitude again is Vm over 2. So moving on to our current slide. So in order for us to be able to calculate power, in order for us to be, uh, to be able to calculate power, we need the voltage components that we've just mentioned. So he says that the power developed by an AM is the sum of powers developed by the carrier, the upper side frequency, and the lower side frequency component. So we're going to calculate the power for each component, and then we sum the, uh, the, three, uh, the three powers to give us the total power of an AM signal. So we're going to derive a formula. So if you still remember, Power is given by V squared over R. From uh, basic electricity, power is equal to V squared over R. This gives us the, total, uh, the power of any signal, where V is the voltage, R uh, is the resistance. So, now what we have just uh, done here, this component PC is the carrier, carrier power, the carrier component. As we saw from the equation, that component has got the amplitude VC. So if we square that VC and then divide it by R, it will give us the power contained in the carrier component. So next, we need to calculate the power contained in each side frequency. So the amplitude of the side frequency, P side frequency is Vm over 2. So since that is the amplitude of the voltage, we're going to square that voltage and divide it by R. So here we, as you can see, the Vm over 2, including the 2, it is squared. Right, and then um, it is divided by R. So now let's come to this part. Uh, this part. So from your previous uh, uh, slides, we learned about the modulation factor M. We want to see how we came up with this M. So if you still remember, M is equal to is equal to V M over V C. So by making V M the subject of the formula, V M becomes M V C. So if you take uh, this V M and then substitute for this V M, you get this part. So you get MVC over 2 by just using this and replacing this with MVC. So now we square this part. We square everything in the bracket. So if you square M, it gives us M squared. Square VC, it gives us VC squared. Square 2, it gives us this 4. So this part is just the same as um as m squared vc squared over 4r so this is 
power contained in one one side frequency. But because we've got two side frequencies, the total power will be P sin plus two side uh, power in the side frequencies, which we derived in the previous slide. So P total is equal to P C plus two P S. Both uh, side frequencies contain the same amplitude, which is Vm over 2. That's why we just say 2. But you can say P, P total is equal to Pc plus P lower side, uh, lower side frequency plus P upper side frequency is still the same. It's saying 2Ps. So now, taking our previous... Uh, uh, derived powers. We saw that PC is cos to v squared, VC squared over R, and then PS is cos to M squared VC squared over 4R, and then 2PS, we just multiply that by 2. Expanding the... So, in this case, they factored out VC squared over R. As you can see, VC squared over R is common in both in both um, factors. So we factor it out. So if we factor it out, this part becomes one. And then for this part, if you divide two uh, here, we get two. And then m squared, since the VC over R is out, we remain with m squared over two. And then this part, it's just equivalent to PC. So we can substitute this part by putting PC. What we are trying to do is to remove the R component since the resistance is not really necessary. But in most questions, you'll be given your power content in the carrier. But it is also important for you to know this formula as well. So it will be PC 1 plus M squared over 2. Your syllabus requires you to be able to derive this formula. So now we're going to consider one thing. If we go back a little bit here, you see that when we're calculating this part remained being PC and this part is the total power for the two side bands. So even if when we come to this point, this part represents the power of the carrier. This part represents the ratio of the power of the two side a side bands. From this, we can actually determine the ratio of the the PC and the power of the two side bands, which is what we have here. The carrier power and the power of the side bands is uh, for the ratio one s to m squared over two, meaning to say. When um, the power of the carrier is 1, the power of the two side uh, frequencies is m squared over 2. So let's take the case where m is equal to 1. It means that we will have 1 over 1 over 2. So the power of the carrier will be 1 as to 0 0.5. Meaning the two, if this, the power of the carrier is 1 watt, the two side bends share 0 0.5 watts according to this ratio meaning each side each side frequency is actually half of 0 0.5 which is 0 0.25 this is for the case of 100 percent modulation which is m is equal to one but as you know normally m will be less than one for a proper modulation modulated signal so he says that even in the case m is equals to one the power of the carrier that carries no information is twice as much as the power of the side bands which carries the information so let me explain this part i've just uh taking you back to the previous slides you see this component. This component carries only the carrier component, which is Fc. This component 
has got FC and FM. This component has got FC and FM. So what the point is trying to say is that this carrier component doesn't have the information signal FM. This component has got the information signal FM. And then this component also has got the information signal FM. So when we modulate a carrier with FM, we get three components. We get one component having the carrier only, which is this component. We have another component having the carrier minus the modulating signal. And then we've got the carrier plus the modulating signal. So this, these, these two components, the lower and the upper side frequency, contain the information signal. It contains the information signal, whereas the carrier doesn't have information signal. There is no information signal for this carrier component. So that's why the point is saying that is saying that um, the power uh, the power in the carrier that carries no information. The carrier carries no information. The carrier component has no information signal. It is just the carrier is twice as much as the power in the side bands, which carry the information. So the information that we want is actually contained in the side frequencies, not in the carrier component. It follows that the efficiency of this AM system, system which is the conventional AM system, is not very good because we are transmitting a component that carries no information, but that component consumes more of the power compared to the components that carries the information. Moreover, both side bands contain the same information. So the use of the space of the frequency band is also poor. The bandwidth uh, covers from the lower side uh, frequency to the upper side frequency. So transmitting both the upper side frequency and the lower side frequency consumes the bandwidth. Since the two have got the same information, why not transmit one of those side frequencies? So which brings us to what we call the suppressed carrier systems, which we are going to cover later on. So first of all, let's look at this example. We are given the power, a carrier of one kilowatt. So already we've got our PC being equal to one kilowatt. Is amplitude modulated uh, uh, by a sin sinusoidal signal of the depth of 50% to the depth of 50%. So here we're already giving our, given our M being equal to 50%, which is 0 0.5. Calculate the power at the lower side frequency and determine what percentage it is of the total power. So here, one kilowatt is just the same as 1,000 watts. 50% is our N is just the same as M is equal to 0 0.5. So we're going to use our formula. PT is equal to PC 1 plus M squared over 2, which gives us, it gives us 1,000 brackets 1 plus 0 0.5 squared over 2. So when we calculate to we'll get one one two five watts, so that's the total power contained in this A M O F. So if we go back to our, to our question, it says calculate the power at the lower side frequency. So we know that power at the lower side frequency is just um, half. Uh, sorry, is just the uh, we subtract our P C from the total power, and then we divide that power that we would have. Uh, so it's 
power side ps would then be equal to so this will be the power of the two side frequencies so to get power of each side frequency we then have to divide by two so after dividing we got 62.5 watts and to express that as a percentage as asked by the question we get 5.56 percent so we're going to use uh, this to explain a few things the total power was 1125 the power of the two side bands was 125 the power of the carrier is equal to 1000 so from these figures you can actually see that the power of the carrier is far much greater than the power of the two side bands. The power of the two side bands combined is 125. The power of the carrier is 1000. So the carrier, which carries no information signal, is consuming a large portion of the power that is being transmitted. And then, whereas the two side bands are carrying 125 watts, mm -hmm. Moreover, the two side bands carries the same information. It's just the same information duplicated. One transmitting one side band will give us a total power of 5.56%, which means the remaining 94 point uh, that's 94.444% is transmitting some uh, is actually being wasted so therefore which makes the efficiency of this type of modulation more to be very poor and again we say the bandwidth is actually being used uh, being wasted because we're transmitting two side bandwidth with the same information and therefore we are con uh, consuming a greater bandwidth So now, for the advantages of conventional AM system, simple demodulation circuit can be used. We've got what we call the envelope detector. I'm going to show you the diagram of the envelope detector. You will actually see that it is very simple. Uh, the disadvantages are a greater part of the transmitted power is associated with the carrier component, and this carrier carries no information. That's the major disadvantage of a conventional AM. And then the information represented by the modulating signal contained in both the upper side and the lower side band. Since each modulating frequency FM produces the corresponding upper and lower side frequencies. So we're simply saying that transmitting the, uh, the, both the lower and the upper side frequency consumes our bandwidth. Both the upper and the lower side, uh, side frequency are carrying the same information. So this uh, we are being shown demodulation of a conventional AM. Like I said, I will show you the process of extracting or recovering the information signal. The opposite of modulation is called demodulation. It is also called detection. In some other case, it is also called a discriminator. Demodulation, detection, or discrimination. So, uh, um, for our conventional AM, you can use what we call an envelope detector. So, like I said, I'll show you an envelope detector, a diode capacitor and resistor. This is an envelope detector. It is very simple, which makes it an advantage to use conventional AM because the receiver or the demodulator will be very, very simple. So what it does is just to follow the 
adulation of the input signal to produce the output signal is shown here. So ways of improving, how can we improve? Firstly, we remove the carrier to enhance the power efficient, reduce or remove the carrier. Whenever we remove the carrier, what we are doing is actually suppressing the carrier. The carrier is there to modulate. We use the carrier to modulate and then we suppress the carrier component. So the suppression of the carrier gives us what we call the double side bend. We still have our two side bends, FC plus FM, FC minus FM, but the carrier is suppressed. So if this is the D is for double side bend suppressed carrier. The other way to uh, improve is to remove one of the side bend and remain with one side bend to create what we call single side bend. Remember, we've already removed the carrier, suppressed carrier. So it's a single side bend, suppressed carrier. So we can only we can either remove just the carrier or we can remove the carrier and one side bend. So as to increase our power efficiency. This, by removing one side bend, will also enhance bandwidth efficiency. We improve our bandwidth by removing one side bend. Uh, for this use advanced technique of QAM, QAM we are going to cover quadrature amplitude modulation in later uh, stages of your studies. So I'm just going to ignore that. So now we are going to talk about AM systems with suppressed carrier. AM systems with suppressed carrier. We've got two AM systems with suppressed carrier. We've got the double side bend suppressed carrier, single side bend suppressed carrier. We say that the carrier consumes much of our power, therefore we need to eliminate it. So we have what we call the double side bend suppressed carrier and the single side bend suppressed carrier. So we start with double side bend suppressed carrier. Like I mentioned, we have already covered this. So now what we are just going to do is just to quickly go through these chapters. So by removing the carrier component to create our double side bend suppressed carrier, and therefore we improve on power. And again, the carrier components carries no information like we mentioned. All the transmitted power now will be focused on the upper side bend and the lower side bend. So this is, is the diagram of a suppressed carrier system. The carrier was there for modulation, but it is now suppressed so that we only have FC plus FM and FC minus FM. So a question might uh, ask you, um, explain the concept of double side bend suppressed carrier using uh diagrams so this is the diagram that you can use and also these are the points that you can use to explain that part so here we are shown a double side and suppressed carrier signal which is not really important for you to know how to be able to draw it but just to identify normally a double side bend suppressed carrier experiences the phase reversal, which is now okay for our signal. It, it is shown by having this, the phase reversal at this point, as you can see, is more like a reversal of our signal at these points, but it is not really important, but it is there. All right, let me try to illustrate it. Okay, if you still remember, when we're explaining amplitude modulation, we say that our signal will alternate on a certain value of carrier voltage. But now because the carrier voltage is zero, it actually means that our signal will start 
alternating at this point and then the mirror part will be like this. So the phase reversal is actually common for our double side band suppressed carrier systems. So, and then it will possess a high frequency. Sorry, my drone is poor, but you can actually see what I'm trying to derive. I'm just trying to show you how this came, how this came to be. So that's the part I just wanted to explain. Okay, moving on. This is the double. The difference is 180 degrees phase reversal whenever the message signal crosses the zero line. And um, this is the part. Since it's alternating at zero, you have your signal experiencing this phase reversal, which is okay for a double side band suppressed carrier signal. So, modulating signal, this is how they derive the formulas, but since we are not covering the formulas, this is not necessary. Let's move on to single side band suppressed carrier. Single side band suppressed carrier, here the frequency spectrum shows you only FC plus FM. This has been suppressed, this has been suppressed, and we only have one side frequency. So basically, we have reduced the bandwidth from this point to that point to only this frequency. So if it was a range of frequencies, let's say from 0.3 to 3.4, you'd actually have the bandwidth being equal to the bandwidth of your information signal. And the total power is only power for this. We have removed power for this. We also removed power for this. So therefore, this one is the most efficient of the three. So the information signal represented by the modulating signal is contained in both the lower and upper. Therefore, it is unnecessary to transmit both. Either side band can be suppressed at the transmitter. So we can suppress one of those without loss of information. Also suppress the carrier as well. When the modulating signal uh, is of sinusoidal form, the transmitted side frequency will be a sine wave of constant amplitude. So if the up, if applied to an envelope detector, the signal, okay, this is just telling us that for single side band suppressed carrier and double side band suppressed carrier, you cannot use the diode modulate. You need more complicated demodulation uh, techniques. So for modulation, First of all, you generate a double side band suppressed carrier and then you remove the other side band using a filter. That's for demodulation. For, for modulation, I mean. So you can use uh, what we call a balanced modulator. This I'm just mentioning it. The circuitry were no longer required to know the circuit according to our syllabus. Then lastly, we've got what to call the Stigia sideband, VSB. The Stigia sideband. So this is one form of single sideband suppressed carrier system. But it allows us not to eliminate entirely the other side frequency. So let's look at it. In case of single side bend, when a side bend is passed through a filter, the band pass filter may not work perfectly in, in practice. As a result, some of the information may get lost. Hence, to avoid this loss, a technique known as the vestigial side bend is used. Vestige, which means a part of which is the uh, from which the name is derived. So what are we saying here? We're saying that, okay, let me illustrate. So in red, this shows the frequencies that we want to, that we want to pass 
through this pen pass filter which is mentioned here. This is the behavior of the pen pass filter. As you can see, the behavior of a pen pass filter at this point actually eliminates part of our signal at this point. But at this point, it is okay. But some of our information signal here is more like we cut part of our information signal. So because of that, we might lose our part of our information. So what vestigial sideband uh, wants us to do is we increase the bandwidth. We increase the bandwidth by allowing a part of the, let's say we want to transmit the upper side frequency. A part of the lower side frequency is actually included so that when it enters through a bandpass filter, our signal is not uh, lost. So let's continue. Vestigial sideband. Both the sidebands are not required for transmission. We have already mentioned that it is a waste. But a single band, if a single band is transmitted, it leads to the loss of information through your filters. Hence, a technique has evolved. Vestigial sideband modulation or VSP is the process where part of the signal called a vestige is modulated along with one sideband. So we're taking a small portion of the unwanted uh, band and include it during modulation so that it is also transmitted. So here we've got our upper sideband. With single sideband, this is what we want. But with this, uh, this is VSB, we take part of the lower sideband as well. We include it to give us the VSB as shown here. So this is the upper side bend. This is a portion of the lower side bend to give us a total bend of the VSB spectrum. So this is a technique that you should also know. Along the upper side bend, a part of the lower side bend is being transmitted in this technique. A guard bend of very small width is laid VSB modulation is mostly used in television transmission. Why? Because television signal require a greater bandwidth compared to, let's say, uh, radio, radio signals. So the bandwidth, obviously, is the message signal bandwidth plus the vestige side band. What are, what are we seeing? This is the bandwidth of the information signal plus the VSP part to give us the total bandwidth. Then the advantage is it is highly efficient reduction in bandwidth compared to a double side band press carrier. Filter design is easy, high accuracy, not needed. So it helps us not to be to create sharp filters. We just create a general filter and that because the signal is very large, it means that even if part of that signal is eliminated, it won't be, it won't affect our information signal. And then um, possesses good phase characteristic, the transmission of low frequency component is possible without difficulty. So these are the advantages. Moving on to the disadvantages. The bandwidth is greater compared to the single side band. The advantages were saying the bandwidth is uh, improved compared to the double side band. Demodulation is complex, obviously. So application, we said it is used in television signals. So this is the end of our chapter. Thank you.